And we are coming to you from the studio at the Paramount, brought to you by New York Cancer and Blood Specialists. It is a pleasure to welcome back once again, Mr. George Thorogood. Hey, George. Big Daddy. How are you? Bad. You're bad to the bone? Uh, that's the idea, isn't it? <laughs> I gotta figure out the microphones here, but you know we don't get live people here very often. I, I, I'm so happy you grabbed the guitar. I'm so excited about that. We have guitars in here, and very you know people look at them and don't play them, but you are you're, it's in your lap, so maybe we'll get something out of you. There it is. Up in smoke. <laughs> That's tomorrow. That's where my money goes. What do you think? You know they're playing here tomorrow. Chim -chim -chim. I think that's a hit. <laughs> I like, uh, actually, what's the other one they had when uh, Alice Bowie in the other movie? Was it? Uh, yeah, they got a, uh, dun, 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 they got a lot dun, dun, of hits. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, they well, got Basketball that Jones. Do basketball they do Jones is good. Well, they're tomorrow uh, night. Let's talk about you. You're uh, playing what's, tonight. What's the other one they, they do? It's a good one. A Mexican American's a big one. Uh -huh. That's a big hit. Yeah, they got some good stuff. You know, I spent an evening with uh, Cheech and Chong. I did a uh, um, video with them called All My Rowdy Friends Are Coming Over Tonight. Okay. And it was shot in, uh, in Tennessee with um, Hank Williams Jr. through the through it. Mm -hmm. And he brought in all these people, Willie Nelson. Well, that's his Jennings. song, right? It that's his... a Hank Williams Jr. song. Yes. Okay, I'll slow and he had, this, he had this song, <laughs> and these are the people he invited, and I was one of them. That's nice. And I, and I got to spend the night with uh, Cheech and Chong and some other people. We were in a hotel room, and Tommy and, and Cheech played for about three hours. They knew every song on the planet. Wow. And they could play them all great. They did about a 15, 20 minute version of Ain't That Peculiar by Marvin Gaye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's about Marvin Gaye, isn't it? Who did that song? Ain't That Peculiar, yeah. Yeah, and I'm telling you, killer, killer. I mean, these guys knew everything, man. Everything from El Paso by Marty Robbins, mm -hmm. right up to Sting doing um, Everywhere You Go, yeah. Everything. They did that one. They, they did them all. So they were performing for you? They just traveled with their guitars. They're, they're rock and rollers at heart. You have to understand that Tommy is the one, not like people think, it was Tommy who discovered Michael Jackson. He was the bass player in a, a band where Michael Jackson was singing. I believe it was in Chicago. And I think the Jackson Five were from Indiana, and, and Michael was singing his band, and, and Tommy got him in his band. Mm -hmm. And Tommy was the bass player in this band and got him on stage and got him singing. And, of course, Diane Ross came and got the credit for she discovered him. Right. But it was Tommy Chong who got him started, really. And both those cats, Tommy and, and Cheech, are, are excellent musicians and excellent entertainers. So it's not all just about smoking dope or, or taking drugs with those cats. They're very talented people and very serious about what they do and very good at it. And they're here tomorrow night. I can't, I, I'm going to miss them. I, I've yet to see them live. You know, I've talked to him on the phone. I've mm -hmm. run into Cheech a couple times, and I, I just keep missing him for some reason, you know? I actually played in a golf tournament with Cheech in uh, Arizona mm. uh, ten, eight, ten years ago. Yeah. Lovely guy. Yeah. I think he, yeah. just, he just started a cigar company yeah. and or something. And I'll tell you, those two cats, when they're, when they're not working on their day off, they, they spend a good two hours in the gym, both of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're in good condition, in shape, okay. healthy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, enough about Cheech and Chong. Let's talk about you. Since you were here Why? last, well, I have a couple of interesting questions for me anyway, from my All part right. of view. Hopefully everybody else will find them interesting as well. Last time you were here visiting with us, the very next day you were heading up to Glens Fall, New York to be mayor for the day. They made you an honorary mayor. It's about a year and a half ago, I guess. In September of 2016? Mayor for the day? Yeah. No? It was, it was no? Mayor for the year. They gave you the gig? Where'd you get this day stuff? <laughs> That's what I read. I was misinformed. My apologies. <laughs> it's all right. So how did that go? That was, I bet it was fun. Well, I, you know, it kind of scared me. You know, politics are not exactly my bag. Uh -huh. But you know, hey, you know, just yeah, they talked good about me, so I took it. You gotta love that. <laughs> now this is the third time you're playing the Paramount. That's so I'm it. assuming mm -hmm. this is one of your you, you enjoy playing here. You have a good time. Well, what we like to do with things, or we try to, unless it goes really, really bad which is rare with our band. We're very fortunate in the venues we work. Um, and if it goes good, I go, well, let's, let's go there again. And mm -hmm. if it goes good a second time, then we, we, we get... Um, Maybe you got something. Yeah, but we <laughs> want to do it a third. Because if it's the third time, it's great. You know, it's always going to be great. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's kind of the way we do things. So tonight's the... Because there's test. always a case if something goes well the first time, you come back and it's like, eh, mm. what's well, up? But if it's... That's two times. Or three times, if the... Three times a charm, they say. Right, exactly. So when you get that point, and, it, and if it works just as good as ever, which I'm, I'm, I'm confident it will, mm -hmm. um, then we know, hey, lock that one in. Cool. 
Well, last time we spoke, you at the very beginning of the interview, we were talking a lot about you getting discovered, Rounder Records, that whole thing. And I'm not sure if at that point in time you even had Party of One in mind, the album you put out this past September. Uh, the the album, yes. Guitar. The, 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 the title, no. Oh, you, <laughs> but you were working on it already at that point? Well, I had been playing that way, Big Daddy, for a long time <laughs> before I got the band together. Right. I was, doing oh, yeah. a, I was doing a solo acoustic thing. Well, there's lots of songs on here that on first listen, I was like, this could have been on the first album. Yeah, well, the, the, some of them were, like we did Disguise Crying Acoustic. Mm-hmm. But there are tunes on there that I did perform when I was a solo. I was doing bourbon, scotch, and beer before we even put the band together. Right. So I did that, and then we got halfway through it, and I was just, I, that's all I could do. Because when I did play live, I, I, I couldn't play for more than like 20 or 30 minutes. I didn't have enough songs. By yourself. And I did, yeah, and I didn't have the stamina to do it. Um, but I did get people's attention. And then Robert Lockwood said, once you get, a, get, a, get an electric guitar and a bass player and a drummer. Mm-hmm. And then just out of coincidence, it was just a couple of months after that, Hound Dog Taylor and the House Rockers came to town. And I said, that's it. There it is. Uh-huh. There it is. So I was more than in flat. kind of pushed me over the edge. The acoustic guitar went down and the electric guitar came up. And we started to do pretty good at that. But we, I had this in mind to do that first. Right. Then move on to electric rock and roll. But we never seemed to get around it. You know, every time we'd go get a record label, um, like when we were with uh, EMI America, right. said, that's fine. They, they wanted heavy rock, which is most of the major labels do. That's what, you know. Uh, yeah, Rounder was right up your alley. Oh, yeah. Especially was, for this project. And they were the ones who also said, hey, don't forget us, you know, sometime in the future. Right. So I kept saying that. I got in touch with them as time went on uh-huh. and said, you know, there's going to be a time and I might want to do that. They said, well, you know, our, our doors are open when you're ready to do it. Right. So we did. And here it is, Party mm-hmm. of One, mm-hmm. which is, I got to tell you, I, I, I went and I, I checked and it, it looks like uh, if it was going to be nominated for a Grammy, it would have been this past year. So, um, you know, I... I I feel really bad because I think it should have at least been non- nominated and maybe even won for a traditional blues album. I mean, I can't believe the Rolling Stones won for the blues album they did, but I, it is, hey, it is high it. quality don't, material. Don't curse us. Here's the Destroyers. George Thorogood and his Destroyers. Okay. Never nominated. Never dominated and never duplicated. Wow. Really? I didn't realize you were never nominated. That's my, that's my, that's my flag. So you're wearing it like a badge of honor. You got it. All right. Well, I was, I, was, I was kind of ashamed, actually, that these guys overlooked it because, to me, it is the quintessential traditional blues album. I, can't, well, hey, I didn't hear all the other you, ones. You thought it should be nominated? I, I thought it should have won the Grammy, actually, well, that's good enough to be for honest me. with you. You don't have to be on a committee. It was so it, it, good. If, if you have enough people say that, that's good enough for me. It's, Some, it's, it's, somebody it's, thinks highly of it. It's just it's, it's heartfelt. I mean, you get it immediately. Mm-hmm. As soon as you start listening to it, you're like... Well, this is a labor of love. It's a sad thing, but there's a lot of things in the music industry these days well, yeah. that is not heartfelt. Yeah. It's more capital gain. It's more, it's a different game now. But this was the real deal. I mean, this is like, you know, Big Bill Brunzi or any of those guys from the old days sitting down, microphone on, hit mm-hmm. record and go. And, and it, it, you really captured it on this album. And it's, it's great because not only do you have like the small, the, the slow bluesy stuff, but uh, the, the up-tempo to, to Boogie Chillin' hmm. is like, that's all you need. That's all you. True. As far as I'm, that's all you need. I'm fond of saying that um, they, 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 a band did a song called. Uh, they said the Crew Cuts did a song called Shaboom, which was the first rock and roll song. Then people disagreed with that, and then other people said, "No, Rocket '88 was the first rock and roll song." Mm-hmm. I say Boogie Chillin' was the first rock and roll song. Okay, so who did that originally? John Lee Hooker. Okay. in 1948, and he did it solo, alone. And supposedly sold a million copies. Wow. Alone. Obviously and there's he a didn't line in the that. song that he says, it's in him and it's got to come out. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking, he sang that in 48 and Elvis Presley didn't come out to like 56. Hooker knew something. Yeah. He could see it on the horizon coming. And I always think that's the first. And they said, yeah, but that's blues. It says boogie. Boogie, rock, it's all the same. Anything, yeah. that, anything that moves is rock and well, roll. Well, rock and roll comes from the blues. You know, well, so yeah, but what I mean like is that. anything that moves you yeah. is, is rock, yeah. is rock and roll. Anything that's sad is the blues. Right. Yesterday is sad. That's the blues. Mm. Uh, I can't help but if I'm still in love with you, Hank Williams. It's sad, so that's blues to me. Right. John Lee Hooker does boogie chilling. That's rock. Because uh-huh. it rocks. It does. It gets the place going. It really does. You know, I talked to, to Hooker once, and he, he, he was playing. Well, I talked to him more than once, but he, when he would do Boogie Chillin' with his band, he would sit there. He could do it alone. 
But when you do it with a band, it would be. Right. And Driving. finally, I got the nerve to go to John and say, John, you know, you do Boogie Chill, and he played it for me just like the original. I was mm-hmm. thinking maybe he can't remember how to play it or something like that. No, he sat down and played it perfectly like the original. I said, my God, why, why do you, why don't you play it like that? Why do you do that ZZ Top mm-hmm. riff to it? And you know what he said? He goes, that's how you get the chicks. <laughs> That's what it's all about. Well, yeah. well you can't argue. No. You can't argue with results. You can't argue with that at all. We're talking yeah. with uh, George Thorogood here, 1031 Max FM in the studio at the Paramount, performing tonight. I believe there's a few tickets left. Not much. It's if it's not sold out, it's pretty damn close, from what I understand. Perfect. Plenty of good seats still available. Yeah, something like that. We never sold out. The Destroyers. That's Perfect. not true. You've sold out plenty of times. Well, don't tell me about it. You have. You have. All right, let's change the subject. I don't want to lose my image. I want to. Uh, I want to congratulate you on your team. I was. You know, we talked about it briefly before, but I was going to actually open the interview with that. Congratulation on your team, the Mets. They're in first place. Wow, well, that's impossible. With you. <laughs> that's impossible. What you just said. What? To get George to talk about the Mets briefly? No. Well, that's impossible. We did it briefly before. Yeah, all right. And that's enough. Yeah. Yankee fan, I'm, that, that just congratulations. Well, don't worry. The Yankees will come around. They will. I'm not they worried They always do. I'm not worried. You know. I'm, not, I'm not worried. I just hope the Mets don't break down. I really, I really hope they can maintain. I really do. Well, you know, I just, uh, you know, they're my team, man. I know. You know, I know they I say? Are. I mean, last place, first place. I'm a Mets fan. Spoken like a true fan no matter what team you're talking Thank about. Thank you. You know, that's just the way it is. You have a record coming out. I know you just did the, the, new, the record mm-hmm. uh, party of one. A single. Yeah, you have a new single coming out in honor of Record Store Day, which is tomorrow. Tomorrow, that's right. And that's right. Uh, so what's the story? I read about it briefly. There was this, you covered a, a song by a band called The Sonics. Mm-hmm. So I need to pick your brain about that. I don't know The Sonics. I, I don't even think I've ever heard of them. I'd never heard of the band or the song. Until? And I was uh, we're actually in the state of New York. Mm-hmm. And... And my wife was on the radio, and she said, I heard this great song, and it might be something you guys might get behind. Now, we're always looking for a new song, something. Everybody is, and I'm thinking, but it's kind of hard. I've been playing Bad to the Bone and Who Do You Love for so long, I can't really play anything else. Right. All right, so <laughs> we're, we're, we're getting in, and I said, all right, well, I'll, I'll get Adam to get me a copy. So he got me a copy. The song wasn't even halfway through it. I got on the phone to her. I said, man, this, this song she is was right. perfect there for you us. Go. I went crazy over the thing. Mm-hmm. So we, we, we started fooling around with it. And, you know, I went home, played with it a little bit, and put it in a key that I thought my voice could. And I said, now let's just see if the band can do it. Well, lo and behold, the guys were just terrific. They got behind that thing. And I said, you know, I pride myself. The 60s was really my time. Right. That was my time. I was a, you know, pre-satisfaction, Stones Freak. I loved Gloria. Uh, I loved uh, Nighttime by the Strange Loves. Mm-hmm. You know, I like Question Mark and the Mysterians, the Blues Magoos. Of course. You know, all that stuff was just me. Ain't got you nothing know? yet. And I, and I, I said, how did I miss this tune? You know, I remember hearing the Woolies doing um, Who Do You Love with a 12-string solo. Mm-hmm. That was bad. Wow. And I, I remember with that. getting the first Steppenwolf album and just flipping out. Mm-hmm. I flipped out over that band. Anyway, I said, how did I miss this song? And then I went to Buddy Leach, or Saxon. He had heard of the band, but he didn't know the tune. Um, then I ran it by some other people, and the guy from Rounder Records, who he said, gee, we got this thing. Would, would Rounder be interested in putting it out? And one of the people who worked for Rounder said, knew all about the band. Right. And know all about their stuff. And I said, gee, that's really cool. And then I thought, well, they're a record label. They're supposed to know these things. I said, well, why didn't you turn me on to it mm-hmm. back in the 70s when I was looking for material? Yeah, exactly. Why'd you give it to me then? Because now the time is right, apparently. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> it's for you. And on the flip side, there's an, a new original by yeah, George Jim Thurgood. Suler, our guitarist, he, he wrote it. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. And what, what tune is that? I'm, it's called Ain't Coming Home Tonight. Ain't Coming Home Tonight. Yeah. And do you perform either one as part of the live set now or no? Why not? Oh, you do? So that's something people can look forward to tonight. Yeah. Checking out exactly what we're talking about right now. Well, yeah, you know, you got to keep moving on, man. You yeah, know? yeah. I'll say, oh, yeah, but it's George. It's the same key and it's the same rhythm and the same beat. But our people say, yeah, but it's a different song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you know, how don't many, get too carried away. How many songs did Keith Richards, you know, write in this uh, open G tuning? I mean, yeah. they're half the, half the Stone songs are in open G. And I remember being a guitar player years ago trying to figure them out, going, what's going on here? I the can't Stone get it right. The Stone songs are, are similar. The Destroyer song are exactly the same, mm. <laughs> just different lyrics with a different title. Right. But that's good enough for our fans, uh-huh. you know. 
They, they're they not the kind of people that really want to see the Destroyers change well, in you, a lot of ways. You, but you have a lot of songs where you could actually just bang, 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 hit, hit, hit throughout the entire set list and wow. not have to divert or do anything else. I mean, there's, there's, you that's got, the that's you know? the dream, isn't it? To have a, a repertoire that you, you can, do. you know, go through it. I, I look at, look at the, look at the, how, how would you, wouldn't you love to be able to do Fogarty song list? Mm. All you have to do is close your eyes and say, this one, this one. This yeah, one. yeah, he's just got you know? so many. And there's so, there's very few artists that have that, like right. Hank Williams does. Uh, the Stones, everybody right. knows their songs and loves them. Well, longevity like has something to do with that. But I mean, not every band has that. Not no. every band has, if you have, I would say, if you have a, uh, one song, you can work steady. Mm-hmm. If you have three songs, you got a career. Right. If you got five songs, you got a good career. Yeah, you're a headliner. So, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so we've been pushing to get to this spot right now, Big Daddy, mm-hmm. that we can have. Uh, I, I, I don't like challenges. <laughs> I don't like, new, um, I like what they call no-brainers. Mm-hmm. So we, we got to this spot. I mean, we've been kicking around for a long time now. Absolutely. You know, and since... So, Aren't you ready to move on to new territory? I go, no. It took me forever to get to this territory. Exactly. So you could go backwards and, and you know, go yeah. back to what you wanted yeah. to do originally, yeah. which because was the that's acoustic Because they want to hear anyway. I mean, they pay good money to come to the show. Uh-huh. And the last thing someone wants to hear is someone going on a bandstand and saying, well, here's something off an album that didn't sell very well. It's a song that uh, nobody really knows or likes, but I'm going to do it anyway because it means something to me. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot what band it was, but they were, they were about to play some new music, and they said, okay, it's bathroom break time or go get a beer or whatever. We're going to play a couple of new songs. They know the, half the audience is going to walk That's out. That's what they come for. It's, it's, you know, they, want, they don't want to hear the new stuff, which is really kind of strange. Life, life is short, and the drive to the gig sometimes is long. And, and the rock audiences are not all just teenagers anymore. Mm-hmm. They have lives and jobs, and you know, they have to pay the rent. And they, So by the time we get there, they get there, right. they don't want any fooling around. Right. They, they want, want to get right to the they stuff. They want the meat and potatoes. Oh, that's it, man. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm not, you know, I, I just, see, I just adhere to the formula. I, I didn't create it. I just do it. But the beauty of, of what you have available to you is that you can interject some of the new stuff and some of the songs they might not be familiar with, mm-hmm. but they're going to enjoy them nonetheless. Mm-hmm. I know this. Well, what I do is I use the same songs, just new jokes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that helps, I'm sure. <laughs> so you're going to play for us? You got the guitar in your I hand. I play. I mean, a full song. Or you want me to just play something from the record? I'll do play that. Play something from the record. Play something from the record? It'll sound better. All right. Well, you know what? I, uh, well, I'll, give, I'll, I'll give you a choice. You want to do Steady Rolling Man or Boogie Chillin'? Um, Which one you want? Yeah, Boogie one. chilling, absolutely. That's the one? John Lee Hooker. All right, here we go. 1031, Max FM. It's George Thurg. It's called Getting Ready for the Boogie. 1031, Max FM, George Thurgood, live with us here in the studio. You sounds like for this record, Party of One, you just went in and did a bunch of songs that you like, plain and simple. True or false? I'd like to say it was that simple, but it wasn't because there was a lot of material there that I had done years ago when I didn't um, have a band or a drummer or a bass player playing with me. Right. So it was it was very difficult to sit there and try to get that just to get my hands to do it because I've been so used to doing other things and even during the show taking my hands off the guitar, which you mm-hmm. can't do when you're playing alone. Right. Also, when you do these things, Sean Berman for me, you know. When you do this, there's no overdubbing, no bleeding. It's, that's it. Yeah, that's and, what I love and, about and the record. And I was going, wow. Because so, so that was a little more strenuous on me, which is, which is why I gave up playing solo to begin with. It's, it was just too hard. You know, it was just too hard and difficult to do. But the record. There's only one Taj Mahal. There's only one John Hammond that can go out there alone and blow the John world away. John Hammond, that's who, was, that's who I was thinking of. John yeah. Hammond, when I was listening to this record. John Hammond popped into my head. Uh, uh, specifically, the, the, the soundtrack to Little Big Man, mm, for whatever reason. Genius. Yeah, it was genius. brilliant. And that's what this album reminded me of. Yeah, well, we saw Very John much. last night. Mm-hmm. He came to the gig. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, nice. <laughs> Did he play? It was all, all, all I could do to contain myself. Did he play with you or no? No, no. Oh. You know, I, I wouldn't be able to you handle don't want that. that. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to handle that. You know. So is there any chance tonight or sometime in the near future you're going to treat the audience to some of the acoustic performances like Party of One? Who knows? Yeah. You I would know. love to see. I know me as personally as a fan 
uh, of music in general mm-hmm. and a, a fan of yours as well. Mm-hmm. Like last time we spoke, I, you know, I go back to the original album. I was, yeah. used to go to my record store, and this guy, yeah. hey, check this out. Yeah. And he put on the first album, and I was like, wow. So I've been with you since the beginning. I would love to see something like this. I would love well, to see it. Well, it depends on a lot of things. Let's, 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 let's get to reality here. It depends on a lot of things. It depends on the audience. Right. It depends on what kind of energy I have that night, mm-hmm. um, the acoustics of the room. You know, there's a lot, lot of elements that you just, from the outside, people say, oh, it'll be easy. Just go up there and do it. Well, right. at, at first hand, you think that. All right. But it's not as quite as simple to break that down as you may think. There might be a point in the show and you say, why don't you do this now? I go, I, my hands are, you know. <laughs> I'm tired. I'm a, Except I'm tired. <laughs> it's like saying, you know, let's take Gibson out of the ninth inning and we'll go play a little softball in the mm-hmm. park in the meantime. All right. Well, I understand. Uh, All right. I understand there are certain ramifications I might not understand. Exactly. But, uh, at, the, at the very least, I would just ask you to mm-hmm. consider it. Yeah, as a fan. Well, at times, I think people would at love times it. it does make sense, people and the it. desire is there, but you know the flesh has to be willing. Mm-hmm. Ain't that the truth, George? A pleasure. I know we've been on the. It's been a half hour, by the way, in case you didn't know, just about. So it's always a pleasure to talk to you. It just it seems so easy and effortless, and I, I'm looking forward to the fourth gig. One hundred three point one to max <laughs> with Big Daddy spinning the hits. Yeah, right. keep those calls coming in, ladies and gentlemen. We're open twenty four hours. We never stop. And remember, rock and roll never sleeps. It just passes out. You said that last time, and I wrote it down. <laughs> and I credit you all the time with that. That's one of the greatest sayings I've ever heard in my life. I sometimes say it all day. I love it. <laughs> all right, steady rolling, man. We'll do that one. How's that? And then we'll say we'll say our goodbyes at this point. George, a pleasure. Now that I got it all set up, this is from the album Party of One, 1031 Max FM, George Thurgood. A pleasure. As always. Thank you. Have a great show tonight. I'm a steady rolling man.